Wouldn't it be great if Samsung and Google joined forces to make the ultimate Wear OS smartwatch? Sounds like a crazy thought, but let me explain. I'm Cam Bunsen, and in this comparison between the Galaxy Watch 6 and the Pixel Watch, I'm going to show you the strengths of each and how they could both learn from each other. And of course, I'll declare an overall winner at the end. So stay tuned. So let's start with the obvious. Design and durability an all important consideration with anything that's as much about accessorizing your arm and about style as it is about tech and functionality. And it's safe to say the two companies took very different approaches here. Samsung's watch has that flat and clean look that is admittedly quite plain. That is of course unless you get the classic variant. The standard model is just a simple flat disc though. Google has put a lot more effort into the look of the Pixel Watch. It's got that gorgeous domed glass top that curves seamlessly and blends into the metal casing. which is also a rotating crown with subtle ridges or grooves running all the way around the edges. It's certainly more attractive than Samsung's plain option. Even the basic strap is nicer and the design of how it fits into the watch case. The soft matte finished rubber strap on the Pixel Watch has these elegant curves and rounded bits that add to the overall softness of the shape and it fits seamlessly into the side of the watch using a really clever mechanism. And it attaches securely. It's pretty simple to fit and remove once you get the knack of it too. Samsung has your standard lugs, and while it's disguised it with a single button for releasing it, it still uses a relatively standard quick release pin that can be quite fiddly to get back into position once you've removed it. Samsung's system does however mean you can pick up third party straps a lot easier. Samsung also gets one thing right that Google for some reason hasn't case sizes. Pixel Watch only comes in one size, and it's quite a small size. It feels really small on larger wrists because of its lack of lugs. The Samsung does 40 and 44 millimeter models to suit different wrist sizes, and of course, there are the classic editions with the more traditional watch designs with a rotating bezel, and again, those are available in two sizes as well. Samsung's watch has also been designed to be more durable. It's got sapphire crystal on the front, which is a lot more impact and scratch resistant than the Gorilla Glass 5 on the Pixel Watch, and that should mean over the course of you owning it, it'll pick up far fewer marks on the surface. Otherwise, both feature the same level of waterproofing. There's IP68 and 5 atmosphere ratings, so they should both be okay if you wanted to take them for a swim. The display in some ways makes up part of that design as well, but particularly when you're looking at the ratio of the display area to bezel thickness. Samsung's smallest model features a 1.3 inch display, and it pushes much closer to the edges of the watch. In fact, despite having a larger display, the smallest Galaxy Watch 6 is still smaller than the Pixel Watch. Compare the two side by side and you'll see it immediately. Pixel Watch's bezels are comparatively large, and so Samsung's clearly used that space more effectively on the front. Now, Pixel Watch would have more visual impact and have a much easier to read and clearer screen if the actual display pushed further out and used those curves to its advantage, and that would add further to the visual appeal of the watch. The watch faces would look even better if the numbers curved slightly around the edges. As it stands, the 1.2 inch round display on the Pixel Watch is pretty small. Still, Google has used blank space effectively to help a lot of those Pixel Watch watch faces blend in with the bezel really well. You can't easily see the edges of the bezel if you choose a watch with a black background. Again, however, if there was a bigger Pixel Watch model alongside the smaller one, we could have that larger screen and one that's easier to read. Now, much was made of the latest iterations of Wear OS when it was first launched with Wear OS 3, predominantly because it was pitched as a joint effort between Samsung and Google. Galaxy Watch was the first to run it. Now, it's been a couple of years and Google has its own take on this software, and just like in the smartphone market, there's a very clear difference in approaches. I think in this area, it's Samsung who could maybe learn the most from Google's ideas. The software on the Pixel is cleaner and lighter, and interactions and animations feel more fluid and responsive. They delight in their style and movements, where the Samsungs just feel a bit cold and functional. Samsung has also loaded it with a number of its own features, of which some are useful, and others not quite so useful. Bigsby remains a bit of a pointless addition. Samsung Pay is there, of course, and you can use Google Assistant or Google Wallet instead of Samsung's if you want to. Now, I also prefer Google's watch faces and the customization choices, as much as I'd like to see them on a bigger display. Now, let's talk fitness and health for a bit, because for a lot of people, it's this area that often determines whether they find a smartwatch useful or not. I wish this was as simple as saying Google has Fitbit on board so it's better, but it really isn't as cut and dry as that. There are elements of that statement that are true. The Fitbit app is really simple to navigate and understand, giving you key information in well-organized and intuitive ways. It gives you all your key elements like your daily heart rate, your sleep tracking and step counting in really easy to digest forms. 
And when you first wake up in the morning, it'll immediately give you your sleep data on the Fitbit home screen and you don't have to go gigging for it. Both watches are good at tracking outdoor activities with GPS route tracking generally matching in terms of heart rate and effort as well. Give or take a few BPM. Now where the Pixel Watch struggled was when I had my more intense workouts, where my heart rate jumped quite quickly into the higher zones. With kettlebell workouts, for instance, they can be quite intense, and it would often take five to six minutes to realize what was going on and show more accurate heart rates. For those first few minutes, it would show a rate that was nearer to what I'd expect to see if I was just walking. Samsung was much better at this, keeping a more responsive eye on my heart rate from the beginning. Now, there was still a sense that it was measuring about 10 beats per minute less than what I'd see on an Apple Watch or a Garmin or Huawei Watch, so it wasn't perfectly accurate. However, it was more consistent than Google's. Samsung has a lot of other features baked in too, like the ability to measure your body composition to see how much muscle, fat and water you're made of. can also detect your snoring at night and even record it, and then help you sleep better by giving you sleep coaching tips. Plus, if you're a runner, it can tell you what your running posture and gait is like, and help you improve that too. Now, Fitbit also locks some features behind a paywall, which is something of a weird move. But if you subscribe, you get advanced recovery data, daily readiness scores, and stuff like that to tell you how ready you are for the next workout. Plus, you get access to audio and video workout sessions. But that premium subscription costs extra. Samsung has similar offerings from a fitness video perspective and has also partnered with a number of brands to bring workout plans to your Samsung Health app. Some are free and others like Fit require a subscription. It's one of those areas if Samsung took Fitbit or Google's approach to the interface, making it super simple and clean, while still featuring some of those more advanced tracking modes, it would be a perfect combination, especially if it came with some of Fitbit's premium stuff just without the paywall. Even in the performance and battery side of things, there are elements to which both could improve from taking inspiration from each other. The thing that makes the most difference of the two, however, is battery life. With the Pixel Watch, I found I could never really get it to last more than 24 hours at a time. So to take advantage of the sleep tracking and insight, I had to charge it at the same point during the day, every day. Samsung's watch might not reach the levels reached by Huawei and Garmin, but I never really experienced any battery anxiety either. You can get up to 40 hours according to Samsung, and in my own usage with workouts included on some days, it would comfortably be a day and a half quite easily between charges. It's the difference between worrying if the watch will get to the end of the day and not. As for general speed, as much as there's a feeling of fluidity to Google software, the Samsung seems to load apps and functions a little bit quicker, likely due to the more efficient and powerful processor inside. Pixel Watch never really felt slow though, so it's not something I think will make all that much difference for most people using it on a daily basis. In the end, in an ideal world, a Wear OS watch would be the combination of these two. Google's sexy glass curves and looks, the Pixel Watch strap mechanism and Google's bloat-free software and Fitbit, but in a watch that's as durable as Samsung's and available in multiple sizes and styles like Samsung's and crucially battery life that's as good, if not better than Samsung's. As for an overall winner, I think the best of these two for most people is gonna be the Galaxy Watch 6. The availability of those different sizes, the fact the classic range exists, plus all the additional features you get and longer battery life means it'll suit more needs than the Pixel Watch and last longer too. Let me know what you think of these two watches in the comments down below, or you can get me on threads. I'm at Cam Bunton. If you did like this video, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and tap the notification bell, and I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.